with me, Stacey. Stacey, Stacey how are you doing today? Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Nikki, for having me. Oh. I waited so long to be on the Nikki Clark show, so this is really <laughs> true. And the answer to prayer. So oh thank gosh, you for allowing me to be here to share my Oh story. God. gosh, God is good. God is good, and thank you. You look absolutely lovely. I love yellow. It's so yes, stunning. Yellow is actually the color of endometriosis month awareness. So, is it? Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so let's go back and talk a little bit about what endometriosis is. And I thank you for, you know, being a champion uh, for endometriosis. But uh, let's talk a little bit about your background leading up what you're doing to Stacey. Okay. Um, well, I've uh, studied in the human services field. And I am, so by a trade and profession, I am a social worker. And I concentrated on youth in my community in the uh, North Etobicoke community. So I've al always worked with families and communities and organizations. Um, I got into that field because I wanted to be a change agent, right? And I wanted to make a difference in my in community. And I've been in it for a while, more, more than 20 years. Yes, I get that a lot. I get that a lot. But I've been around. I've been behind the scenes. I've, uh, I was a part of Olivia Chow's original, uh, the Toronto Youth Cabinet. I was on that. I was on the, the Chief of Police Board. I was worked with the police. I, I worked with uh, with the government in my local area, with uh, Mel Lassman, any former mayor. And, and you know what? I had, I had a good run. I had a good run working back behind the scenes. I think now at this point in my life, um, somehow, I guess, the book and, and my awareness and my advocacy has put me on the forefront and now um, and not being behind the scenes. So um, yeah, it's been an honor to be able to share my platform on different social media outlets uh, through Zoom. And I, I've been on uh, interview the iLive radio and, and I also got a, a in, interview through the Toronto Caribbean newspaper. That was a blessing. Thank you, oh, Paul, fantastic. for writing that. So yeah, so yeah, I just basically be moving. As you see me, Nikki, as, as, uh, remember when we had the red carpet events of the community? You know, I'd be at the Black yeah. Carpet. I'd be interviewing people at the Harry Jerome Awards and at the Black Black Diamond Ball. And you know, I I was I was a face of um, Black women's health in regards to um, sexual health and um, HIV prevention when I was working through women's health. But it's through doing my work through women's health I realized that there is um, an, an underlying issue. There's indivisible. Um, illnesses and um, different things that are happening behind the scenes in Black women's health. And I, and I thought, wow, I thought I was the only one. It's only when I went through my work and I went through these events and outreaches when I did workshops, I realized that, that predominantly um, Black women are suffering specifically and, and, and nobody's speaking out about it. Okay, well, in regards to right now, the, there's a trending issue and a lot of um, Black um, Hollywood stars and, and film stars have come out. Tia Mori, um, you know, there's different people coming out and talking about um, basically um, endometriosis. It could be PCOS. It, it's, it basically comes to reproductive reproductive issues, and we find that in America and also in Canada too. We don't even have the proper stats here in Canada. To, so I'm going by American stats that Black women or people Caribbean women, I, I have higher form of fibroids and cysts and issues with the, the reproductive system and their bowels. And um, so it's come to a point where um, um, unfortunately that we are not being seen and heard. We are being gaslighted. We're not um, being heard by the doctors, the surgeons, and um, there's um, limited resources in, in regards to where to get help. Everything I've found is through either the library or I Google, right? I can imagine a woman 10, 20 years ago, not have being able to access the information that I have now just at the flick of my finger, but that um, I was able to find support groups, other women, predominantly in the US before I found them in Canada. And uh, yeah, so endometriosis is, is it's, a, it's, a, it's a trending topic, especially also on, on Twitter. Okay. Uh, so tell me uh, about your experience, journey with endometriosis. When, when did you first discover it and, and how have you been able to manage it? Sorry. Uh, the, your journey of endometriosis. Yeah. Talk your experience. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um. So yeah. So I um always had endometriosis. Um. I didn't know as a child. Um. I I did get my everything was late for me. I kind of <laughs> puberty and all that stuff. So everybody had their 
their menstrual cycles and getting their normal little periods and stuff. And I was always late. So I got mm-hmm. it late. But I um I I realized with my menstruation cycle that it was it was very havoc and it was just very painful as a child. Going into um high school, I was um I was a gifted student early on, so I was um on on the honor roll and all that stuff. But it came to a point where um, I would be missing a lot of classes and staying home uh, around the end of the month. And, you know, nobody never said anything. Nobody really, um, you know, saw that I was struggling, but I still try to maintain that level of being on the honor roll and being part of student council, running track and so forth. School plays, I love drama. And at that point I was like, yes, I'm gonna be a dancer. <laughs> So um, yeah. I, I went into dancing actually, and I danced for a while. I actually did some movies, I did some commercials, and did some things in the back. I did background work in wow. Toronto, and uh, back in the day, even with Larik Bent, what I'll tell you that story one day. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I I I thought I was a young woman living my life, but um, it, I think it was the college that I, I I decided to speak out because I just couldn't um keep up with the course load in college, and um. And I was, it came to a point where I almost didn't finish. I almost didn't graduate. And I, I really, I really thank um, my professors and people around me. Um, I went back to school about 10, about 10 years later, in my 30s, I went to university again to attempt to, to, I fin- to finish my degree and, and going to teaching. But uh, doing two degrees at one time, that stress, it caused, it caused the, the growth of the endometrial, to, uh, endometrial in, my, in, my, in my lining to grow even more. And so unfortunately I wasn't able to finish university, but at that time and become a teacher, I had to put down that dream, but um, I was still active in the community with my local ministry with, with Youth for Christ. I was in full-time ministry at that, at that point too. So yeah, um, it, it, it's been a journey. Uh, it's been a journey. I, I just, um, I come to a point where I realize that, you know what, um, I have to advocate for myself and I need to speak up about it. Uh, at that time in church and ministry, I, I honestly did consider myself as a real woman with the issue of blood that was trying to hold on to the yes. thread. I really do consider that. Uh, that yes, yes. That, and that's the story that I held on to to get through hope, to get through my next phase of life. But for when I started a project or started a job, I started ending, stopping, ending, stopping, and I couldn't figure out, but it was all contributed to the endometriosis. So I was diagnosed three years ago, and the only way you can di- be diagnosed is through surgery. So I had that incision surgery where they took out, and they found, they found, um, they took out, a, they actually, it's excision surgery, they took out 16 fibroids, Nikki. In, in, in Mississauga, wow. Southern Valley Hospital. I'm the only case there that there's no woman that has that amount of fibroids. Of it. And it was a six hour surgery and they, I honestly thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to die. And it was a miracle. I oh lived, my. I didn't bleed out. I didn't have to have a blood transfusion after. I had to learn, um, following the, the, the recovery, I had to learn, I, was, I came out the hospital with a walker. I had to learn how to walk and run again. And I, I, but God had given me a plan. Mm-hmm. I felt like the Holy Spirit said, you know what, have a plan in place. And I had certain people, nutritionists and trainers. I, I, I trained with um, Gavin Scarrett and he was just helping me in that rehabilitation. So now when people see me working out online, they just think I'm, I'm just working out for the sake of working out. But I was actually, that was my comeback. And then when I actually did share my story yeah. share after my comeback on Instagram, it went wild. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, I had no clue that you were going through that while we were watching you. So people yeah. were watching me, but didn't know my, my, my backstory. And I, I've had some major comebacks. Mm-hmm. I've had another surgery too, so I've had another surgery. And, um, and up to this point, yeah, the doctor did say, okay, take this little pill and you'll be fine. But no, my life changed forever. It's not little one little pill. There's consistent maintenance and treatment plans that I have to do weekly yeah. um, in order for me to be well and present right before you, right? So I said, it's an invisible illness. I look yeah. very well, but behind the scenes, you know, I'm in pain, chronic pain every day. I'm, I'm fatigued. I'm, I'm tired. I have brain fog. I can't concentrate. That was published last year in November, and I took about uh, maybe about um, two to three months to write it. Um, it was actually a composure of different um, journals that I had when I was moving through the summer. And I said, I'm going to take different stories of, of segments of different themes that happened in my life and try to compile it all in one. 
Now, this is a start. <laughs> Somebody asked me, are you going to write a second one? I said, yes, right? But it, it's just a start. Um, and, I, and I found so much freedom in writing. It's just something I used to write as a child and as a young woman. I used to write poetry and creative writing and different things. So it's a start. I, I, I'm definitely going to rekindle that skill, and I'm hoping to, to, to work on it more and become the best me. Show us cover of book. It's beautiful. And yeah, I, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's been a whirlwind. It's been, it's, my story is messy, <laughs> but it, it really does. Um, I, I see that through forgiveness, through me writing, I've been able to forgive. I've been able to heal in certain areas. I've been able to move on. And the funny thing right now that I, I, I'm seeing is that I, I'm seeing that um, also my relationships with my family and my friends are closer. Again, because I could just come out and speak out the truth of who I am. I don't always have to yeah. pretend that I'm well to show up. I could always say, okay, you know what, I'm not feeling today, or can I reschedule or what? I've come to a place in my life where I said self-care, and you know, Nikki, through last through last year to now, self-care, self-love in times right of uncertainty. Where can people buy the book? Okay, so the book, I'm personally selling it. I also have crystal copies. If you're in the Toronto, Ontario area, I can ship it to you. I've actually shipped to New York too. So it's like, the US is okay. And um, you can find me through Facebook on Destiny Savory. Destiny is, is the name that I chose for myself actually after my surgery. On October um, 28th, the day after my surgery, I went under a safety and I came up as Destiny. And I said, I'm going to continue to, to live a life yes, that I'm destined for because I'm destined for greatness, right? So Destiny Savory on Facebook or Instagram, you can DM me or, or you can get it on Amazon. Thank God. you so much, Nikki. God bless you. Bless. Bye for now. The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com.